Hey, my friends, this is The Art of Prepping. I hope you guys are doing well today. The deer in my area are very active right now. It's just that time of the year they, they typically come out and uh, they graze in people's yards in the morning. And uh, they just, they're real playful, you know, they just kind of doing their thing and they don't seem to really care um if the humans are around <laughs> they're just kind of out and about uh but i do believe that they have um you know a good amount of food you know the, the grass is really growing pretty well out here and there's all kinds of of vegetation that's growing so you know animals are always a lot more happy when they're full or then they have some type of food source and um you know it hasn't been like really really cold as well so that makes things a little more comfortable. There has been some code snaps, though. Um, and actually, there was one code snap recently that just kind of damaged part of my garden, which really makes me upset. Um, it just got too cold and some of the leaves got brown. And I think some of the plants are kind of not doing as well as I was hoping. Um, sometimes this happens. You have these code snaps that just come out of nowhere and... It damages the plants and you just do the best you can. That's why having extra seeds to replant is, is you know, a good thing to have. Uh, in this quick video, though, I just want to go over three techniques that I use to be more productive. Uh, very simple techniques. And that was one of the reasons why I like them, though, so much is they're so simple. Um, and I'm just going to run through these and, and let you go because I have a lot of things I need to do today. Uh, the first is to use the two minute rule, the two minute rule. Um, we've talked about it, I think, at least once on the channel, but it's an awesome technique. And that is simply put that in your mind, mentally, you know, you set aside two minutes to do a task and you tell yourself if you don't want to do it after two minutes, you can stop and you can just walk away from it. But what typically happens is that you, st you create a state of flow. You kind of get into some momentum, right? And once you start doing something for about two minutes, You'll want to do it a little longer. And this is what happens to a lot of us. And I have done it for a number of months now, this technique. And I can tell you that I typically continue doing that task for another 15 to 30 minutes on average. It's pretty incredible, really. And I'm talking about stuff that you normally don't want to do. If, once you get started on things, typically you can get going with it and you can continue on with it for a little while. But yeah, definitely the hardest thing sometimes in life is getting started on something. Uh, I think a lot of times we just don't want to be bored or we don't want to do things that just aren't interesting. I totally understand. Uh, I'm the same way. It's like mowing the grass. I know that there's a lot of people that just love to mow the grass, but I'm not one of those. You know, I don't like to spend over an hour and a half sitting on a little lawnmower basically driving in circles to, you know, to clean up the yard like that, you know, to, to mow the grass. I, I don't have any interest in that. Uh, but some people really get a big kick out of it. But it's something that I avoid. And so I have neighbors that cut their grass twice a week. And I'm lucky to cut it once every two weeks. <laughs> but it's just because I don't really want to do it. But there are times that I use this particular technique, the two minute rule, to get started. And so I'll just tell myself, I'll mow the grass for two minutes. And afterwards, if I don't want to do it anymore, I'll just stop and park the mower and call it a day. But what typically almost always has happened, actually, always I've always gone longer than two minutes. And so what I see is that I, I, I'm making progress, you know, I can look back and go, wow, the yard does look a lot better. <laughs> and I can see that it's not really causing me any kind of suffering or pain, right, to mow the grass. And so I'm like, okay, I can do it another five minutes. And then before you know it, I'm already halfway done, you know. And there are times, though, that I've actually just mowed the entire lawn, even though I never planned on really doing the entire lawn at one time. So, you know, it is what it is. It's a pretty cool technique. Now, the second technique is to play your favorite album. Now, if it's a really short task, and believe it or not, a lot of us do procrastinate even on short tasks. They only last maybe like five minutes or so. Uh, that's bad, I know, but we do it. So in the really short task, maybe it's just your favorite song. So you play your favorite song and it helps you kind of get through it real fast. It kind of distracts you. But if you have a longer task that might be like 40 minutes to an hour and a half or something like that, get out your favorite album. 
employ it from one end to the other, right? And, and that helps me a lot. Now, I'm not like one of these guys that always continuously has to have music on or some type of talk show or something. I don't like having like noise constantly going on. But there are times when music or your favorite talk show or whatever can be a really good catalyst to kind of get you into some momentum. So there you go there. And, and lastly, I just want to say, though, to give yourself incentives. This last technique, I, I don't use it that much anymore, but just because I've been using the two-minute rule so much more than, than I had before. But the incentive uh, kind of, uh, you know, in, uh, I guess process or technique is, is that you give yourself one or more, you know, incentives to look forward to. And I find that actually a small series of incentives is better than just, than just one. So, for example, if you, if you clean the car, you'll have some, I'm just being really generic here, but you'll allow yourself to have some ice cream or <laughs> to watch your favorite show or whatever, right? Maybe you'll have like 30 minutes to play your, on your you know, guitar or something. Maybe there's something like that, but to have, have a, a, a series of things, and especially if it's smaller things, definitely have a series of those. Uh, just some things that you can kind of think about and look forward to as you're going through whatever you don't want to be going through. And so, you know, life is monotonous enough. Life is sometimes challenging enough, but if we can kind of slip in you know, various techniques to kind of bridge the gap. It's amazing what we can do. It's amazing how much more productive we can be when, when, we, when we're able to actually start, you know, the process of doing something that we need to do and get that momentum, create the flow, uh, which gets us to the, the end results that we just need. You know, sometimes we, it's not that way we want to do certain things. It's just we need to do certain things. I mean, there's just some things, some things just have to be done. You know, I mean, I know people, which is a little hard for me to understand this one, but there are actually quite a bit of people out there that don't like to cook. Like they really just, they just dread it. And they're willing to pay top dollar for someone else to cook for them or just, just to buy pre-made stuff or whatever. Um, you know, and I'm not here to judge, you know, because just because I'm not like that doesn't mean that it's, I think it's the craziest thing in the world, but it's just kind of hard to understand, but that's just an example though, of something that for some people on a, on a daily basis, they can't really get over that. They just can't find any satisfaction in making their own, making their own meals. And so maybe using techniques to kind of ease yourself into it over a period of time, it won't get so bad. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like you still may need to have an incentive or you may still need to trick your mind to get started, but things can get easier over time, the more you do it. And so maybe when you're making a meal, make it the, as fun as possible. Put some music on or, you know, some people actually like to, you know, uh, kind of do this with other people. You know, that's another thing, though. Sometimes we do too much uh, by ourselves. There's a lot of things that we should do by ourselves. There's a lot of things that we can really enjoy deep more deeply when we have the time to really soak it in and to contemplate what is going on. But sometimes doing things with other people it just creates a whole nother dynamic. You know, it, it creates another level of, of, of satisfaction to do certain things. Like, for example, there are a lot of people that really don't get much out of going to a, a movie theater or a restaurant by themselves. Now, I'm of the kind of person that I don't really uh, need to be with someone to do those things. But I typically don't even go to restaurants or theaters to begin with. So it's kind of a, you know, a moot point for me. It's like whatever. But, but there's a lot of people that, that want to go to the movie theater. They want to go out to eat, but they just won't do it, you know, because they, oh, they'll feel odd. But it's also they just, they just don't have the satisfaction. You know, it's just not as fun when you go by yourself. And... I've kind of noticed that more so for young people. It's not like the older you get, the more you just don't care anymore about certain things and you just do it. But, uh, but that's an example, though. It might be a loose example, but it's just something that, you know, for a lot of people, you know, it's just, it's just a lot more fun. You get a lot more out of it um, when you're not just sitting by yourself doing certain types of activities. Now, obviously, for most of us, if we're, if we're reading a book, you know, or even, you know, if we're at home, 
and we're watching our favorite movie, there, there's probably going to be some of us that prefer to be left alone and, and just in solitude to do that because we just get so much more out of it. We can just focus that much more because you know how it is when you're trying to do something that you really want to focus on and someone's distracting you, they take away from your ability to really uh, connect to what you're doing. Uh, and, and so I hope these three techniques help. I know they're real simple, but that's once again the point. Uh, to give yourself uh, a few options to uh, access some uh, of the momentum that sometimes we lack in our everyday life. And what's so amazing, though, is that you can get into a habit of deploying one of these three uh, techniques and you'll find that, you know, things are just a lot more smoother in your life. Things are just smooth uh, in, in the sense that uh, you can kind of just uh, get things done a little bit faster and you don't have to kind of procrastinate or avoid or avoid or, you know, it's just like I avoid all the time certain things, but when, like, for example, right now, I'm making this voiceover instead of doing the dishes, you know? So I, I've actually avoided doing that, but I wanted to do this too. So I just picked one. So right after I get done with this, I'm doing my dishes. <laughs> it's not very fun. Um, I don't have a dishwasher and that's fine. You know, I don't, I don't really have to have one, but it's just one of those things though, that it's, uh, it's just monotonous, but guess what I'm going to do? I'm just going to tell myself, you just have to wash the dishes for two minutes <laughs> and then you know what happens though, right? Yeah. I'll get into a nice zone there. And before you know it, five, 10 minutes later, I'm done. And uh, I'll be like, wait, I'm so happy I did that. And, and it's kind of like, check it off the box. You know, that's just one more thing I got done today. And, uh, you know, sometimes it's just that way. Like I, I've been working on my book, you know, I've probably been telling you this for a while now. I think since what? maybe January. It's, it's been a while. It's been a number of months. And a lot of times now what I do is that I just write about one to two pages a day. That's it. Before I was doing maybe slightly more than that, but I mean, that, that goes back a few months, but now I'm basically just doing a few paragraphs to up to two pages a day range. And basically I just kind of do whatever I feel like I want to contribute for that day. And then I just stop and it makes it so that it's really easy to approach the next time because there's like no pressure, you know, there's really no minimum or no maximum. It's just whatever I want to do. But because of the type of writing that I'm doing, it takes a lot of brain power and I have to look up certain things and I have to kind of, uh, you know, organize my thoughts, you know, in a more concise and somewhat more complex way than I normally think. And so it, it takes me a few minutes to do a small amount of writing. But guess what? When I come back to it, I'm real proud of it. So, you know, over time, though, because I'm so consistent and I've been doing this for a number of months, I'm almost halfway done from what I, my ultimate goal is for this the, for the book. Like I'm almost halfway done. Now, so you may be saying, wow, it might take a whole year to write the book. Yeah, so be it. I mean, if it does, it does. I mean, you never know, though. Next month, I might be in, you know, like a, a writing maniac. Maybe I'll, I'll knock out 10 pages a day next month. I don't think I will. I, I kind of like this slow and easy thing. And so once again, if you can find the approach to doing something and be consistent with it, you get things done, you know, and with writing, for example, you know, it's not a competition, you know, it's not like it's a marathon. And so, so many people say, man, I, I, I can't get it done in, in a few weeks or a few months. Therefore, I'm not going to do something like, you know what? Then you need to reframe that thought. You need to reframe this whole objective because sometimes things just take more than a few weeks or a few months. I mean, that's what they call like what long-term goals. I think that's what they call that. And so, you know, sometimes things in life just aren't quick and easy. Uh, I remember when I went to college, I could never really try to uh, think about the entirety of college because it was so overwhelming. Like, I didn't want to think of it like, like how many more years left I have to do? Because it was just like really unpleasant to think about it like that. So I always just thought about it as, okay, I have a, a number of classes that I'm in right now. All I got to do is pass these classes, right? To be competent in these classes. That's all that I need to do. 
And so I just kept my my focus kind of narrow in the beginning. And as I got through college, I started to think just a little bit about the next semester, but I wouldn't kind of obsess about it, you see. And be, before you know it, though, I was kind of, I worked my way through all those classes and got several degrees. And it was just like, let's just work on what's at hand, what's before us, right? And before you, you know, you get so ahead of yourself, then you just trip over everything. And so I just kind of learned over the years to kind of slow down more. It's good to slow down and to just take one aspect, one element at a time. And that's why I think that a lot of us don't be even begin to start things like projects or tasks, even though we're more than capable of doing it right now, in fact. But we, we sometimes just don't do it. Now, there's also like other types of um, techniques out there. And I just want to bring up one more. Um, it's sometimes called uh, the two minute or five minute rule as well. But it's a different aspect than what I just said. Instead of just trying to get yourself started, um, it's more of kind of a statement, a statement. And so however you want to call this, I, let's just call it the five minute rule so we don't kind of confuse it with the two minute rule. But basically, if there is a task that takes two to five minutes to do, then you should just go ahead and stop right now and do it. Just stop right now and do it. And that's just because it's saying, hey, you know, this is, you know, I mean, here in my local area, we call it nickel and diming. You don't want to nickel and dime, you know, you don't want to kind of just be ridiculous or absurd, right? And how you manage your time. And if you're constantly trying to plan in or make, are trying to plan a, an event that only lasts two to five minutes to do, <laughs> that is on, that's right there kind of in, in the realm of ridiculous. Just go ahead and do it right now. Because, you know, some of us, I mean, literally some of us take a bit of time to plan our days out. And sometimes what we find is, is that we spend more time planning than doing on some days, not always, but I'm just saying, I've seen this happen with myself before that I'm, I'm so trying to be so detailed and so technical in my approach of the day to maximize every moment that I've realized that sometimes I look at my watch and I've already been, I've been planning the day for like 30 minutes or an hour even. And I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to start the day. Uh, most of my planning though starts the night before. Right, so it's basically I'm kind of winding down. I'm going to bed, but then I realize even like how much time I kind of think about the next day. It's it's kind of a little bit ridiculous, but at the same time, when I wake up, guess what? I have everything kind of figured out. So I just go right into motion. I just start checking off the list. You know, I get one thing done, next thing done, boom, 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 boom. And um, my goal typically is, is to get the bulk of it done. I mean, sometimes all of it, but I mean, the, the vast majority of it for sure uh, within the first four hours of being awake. And then that kind of frees me up, if not completely frees me up for the rest of the day. And then I can do research or I can do extra things. I can just hang out. I can go for walks. I can you know, uh, cook, you know, more, you know, extensively than just trying to throw something together just to get some food in me. I can actually make some really good meals, but you need time to do that. Right. So that's the, that's the thing you can buy time by being organized. So it's not really a bad thing being like somewhat, you know, rigid when it comes to like managing your time and actually having a schedule. That's not, that's not really a bad thing, but it can be kind of overdone if you do it too much. I mean, you can go too far with it, um, just for an example, and I'll end the video after this. And that's simply that when I was in college, I had these day planners, right? And it would break down the daytime hours into 15-minute increments. And I literally pretty much had the darn thing full, filled up almost every day. Now, of course, my classes didn't last just 15 minutes. Most of my classes lasted between one to two hours, just depending on the type of class. But still, though, I had all of the blocks of the time allocated for something, you see. And so that was back then. And that was out of necessity, though, just so I had to be organized. You know, people in college have to be organized or they can't, they really can't, um, I guess you call it like, find their way through the day. I mean, it would be just chaotic. 
if you didn't have some things, you know, set up that for your reference, because you can't sometimes remember everything. Like sometimes I couldn't remember like what day of the week it was and like what classes go with that week. And if I didn't have it written down, I'm, I wouldn't even know sometimes what class to go to. Because if you haven't gone to college, it's kind of like this, like every other day you go to the same class at the same time. And then on Fridays, they, they typically alternate it. Like one week you have this class will go on Friday and the next week you'll have a different class. And I mean, you kind of have to keep up with what week is what, you know, what day of the week is it? And like, once again, what classes do I need to go to? And then what homework is due? Or is there a quiz or a test coming up tomorrow or today or something? And I mean, you do that, you know, you go to school and then you have like a part-time job or like I sometimes had two part-time jobs. And then God forbid you actually have friends, you know, or you, you know, like I had a a girlfriend off and on and, and, and you try to have someone like you try to have a relationship and friends and then like work and school. And then you're supposed to have some time to stay healthy, like, and go work out at the gym, man, you talk about a full day, you talk about stacking (laughs) <laughs> your task, you, you know, and, and staying productive. I think I was like, I mean, extremely productive machine. I was just almost mechanical. And as the older I got, the more that I wanted to get away from it because it's just so rigid though, really, when you look at it, that it, it really doesn't feel that great after you do it for so long. And certain personalities though, I think, and this is one of the reasons why I think there's so much of a dropout with certain types of personalities is because it doesn't, does it connect with that whole, um, that whole milieu, you know, the whole, uh, environment of college, you know, or university or, or higher education. It's just that some people don't, don't excel in really rigid, confined types of, um, schedules. You know, some people are a lot more, uh, creative in the sense that they, they need a lot more flexibility. They, they don't, they don't just, uh, they don't excel you know, in time management, nor do they, do they excel under pressure or, you know, they don't do well with just having a schedule. Now we know when you get older (laughs) that you have to do certain things at certain times. Like if you don't show up at work at certain time, over time you will get fired because you're not on time, you know, or if you just happen to leave work early, you you can't do that. You know, you'll get fired. So we know that in the, in the, in the world that, you know, most people live in, uh, that there are, like things that, that need to be done, you know, and, and that things are just as they are. And so there is a level of acceptance of that and adjustment to that. But, but college though, can really be the extreme version of that because it's almost like micromanagement of every minute of their day. Almost it's like, can be pretty intense, especially if you do what I did and basically just kind of always was involved with something. And I had several clubs too. Typically I had one to two clubs at any given semester that I was involved with as well. And so you try to do all that. And so you, you basically get to a point though that you're very you know productive on paper, but you may kind of start to get a bit unsettled inside because you may not be taking care of yourself enough. And so you have to find that medium happy ground, right? But yeah, college was definitely a trip, you know? And I, for one, took the maximum, pretty much the maximum amount of credits you could take in a semester. In fact, I had to get a dean override on some of my semesters because I took so many. And so the way it was back in the day when I was in in college, well, it's university, whatever you want to call it. So that's the funny thing. In, in my university, they had colleges within the university. So it's it's like people ask, well, where? So anyways, it was mainly a university is what it was called. But the thing was, though, is that, you know, you have uh, like the semester, would, you know, if you were full time, this is how it was when I was back there, that if you were full time, it was just one cost. It was just like once you hit over a threshold of classes that from there on out, there was no additional charge. So it was kind of like a, a set fee for full time status. Now, in a lot of colleges and universities that it's almost like you pay per credit hour. But back in the day and at the place that I was at, once you hit over, I believe it was 12 credit hours, then anything above that was no, no additional charge. So what I would do is that 
I would keep a minimum of 18 credit hours. But then there was also times that I did 21 and 22 credit hours with a Dean override because it was basically like free classes. I mean, you know what I'm saying? Like it, now it was very difficult to handle all those credit hours. Now, most of the, the classes, though, were three credit hours. So you can kind of do that, you know, divide, let's just say 21 divided by three. So, you know, there's there's seven, you know, seven classes there that I was going to. Seven classes is a lot, especially if you're like a senior, you know, and it can get kind of heavy. Plus you're working, plus you have relationships, plus, you know, you're trying to take care of yourself and all this. It's just a lot. So anyways, some people approach life differently. And you know what? We all have to kind of figure it out that if something is too much or not enough. And so it took me, though, my undergraduate degree to really understand what too much was to hit my limit. And so when I went to graduate school, I was able to kind of make sure that I didn't push that envelope so hard that it was going to cause me some major problems. I still pushed it, though but I didn't go to the extremes. And because of that, I was still able to graduate on time and no problems. I still had extra classes. And that was kind of the funny thing too. In my undergraduate, I, I still had extra classes. Like I actually did more than I even needed to, to get the degree. And so there you go. There's another thing right there that sometimes just because you're so productive, it, it you know, I mean, I don't really have regrets because I have, you know, some more knowledge from those classes, but it was just like, Sometimes, though, you can overdo things, but that really is the opposite of what this video is about, right? This, this video is about getting started and trying to, you know, do things. <laughs> so I, I hope that everybody uh, uh, achieves that goal. I know it's not something that's the easiest thing, but once you get kind of uh, perfected in, in, the, in the art of, of getting started on things, and not avoiding and not uh, trying to uh, justify other approaches that really aren't what you really need to be doing. So, I mean, it's almost like, you know, you stop lying to yourself, then the world around you and your life actually gets a lot better, you know, like the quality of life improves. So with that, thanks for checking the video out. Catch you later.